It's a chilly early morning in the outback when we've decided to catch the sunrise in a way we have never done before. My name's Jerry. I'll be your driver for this morning. The pilots and ground crew have already gone out with the balloons, so they're testing the wind currents and such like. They'll let me know where I've got to meet them. But basic safety, have a look at those sheets. I've realized in this country, it's just so vast. Look at it from the ground at any point is not good enough. You need to get up. Being in a hot air balloon is by far the best way to really see a country. You're like a floating ninja. Wow. That guy's in hurry. Yeah. There's rush hour traffic. Yeah, the second car we've seen in the last 10 minutes. Too many people in Alice Springs. Let's go home. Keep on trying to get this. Early morning thing problem is that uh, breakfast is delayed. No, oh, but don't cry. I've got everything planned out. And some plans I make are exceptional. You'll find out about this one. The simple physics of hot air rising above the cold gives us a delightful way of exploring our world with these gigantic balloons. There's something serenely magical about the first rays of the sun just touching you. Hey, this is the first time I've gone up to see a sunrise, huh? I know. Look at oh that. God, it's coming fast. Good. It's coming fast. Wow, it really takes off, eh? Well, it's us who's taking off. Listen, I have to say, this is one of the most exciting things that you could do early in the morning here. Yeah. That big sound of the flame, the fire, the hot air, getting up above, look at oh, that. Oh, there's another uh, balloon up there, hey? So beautiful. So for me, the most surprising part was the ease with which you just sort of came off and floated away gently. How do you capture a scale like this? Look, it's so big here. Yeah. This is only with the camera of your mind, yeah, your eyes. This is incredible. You know, we've never done this before, and I have no idea why. Really? Yeah. First time. The first time for everything, eh? Oh my God, yeah. This just went to my top five list of most amazing things I've done. Yeah. Top five lists or list of top, top five, five things I've ever done. I'm like so excited I can't even speak straight. I think we should do this again. Yeah. As soon as we land, we'll do it once more. The yeah. question. Agar is height se dekho, get an idea of how empty. The place really is there. Yeah. I mean, there's four or five houses there. There's some industrial kind of thing there. And it's empty as far as you can see. Well, to put it in perspective, mm. the entire population of Alice Springs, mm. which is about 27 to 29,000, would fit in one square kilometer in Delhi. That's how many people we have in one square kilometer. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Like Yase, from this height, you can see how the weather has changed the land here. Yeah. Dry patches, lakes, low-lying areas. Unbelievable. I mean, the mountains, the forest, the land, the clouds. Yeah. I mean, this is it's like an impossible display. Ah, beautiful. Shobhanathan. Oh, where is he? And our first kangaroo. There's our first kangaroo. I've done some pretty exciting things in my life. Still, this is beautiful. Yeah. Very, very beautiful. Now that the best part is over, there's another best part. How are you feeling right now? Hungry. Yeah, I have a solution for you. I have a solution. Let's just leave it at that. Are you going to You don't ask for the impossible, OK? Get your 
feet on the ground. Lift up, Mayor. What happens if it starts going up? Lift, lift Mayor, lift. Lift. And now lift. push in the trailer. Lift, go on. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> well, I'm feeling good. I don't know about you. <laughs> That's no, no, no. happy dance. You, you can't do that anymore. That's, the balloon is like... Happy dance. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank that you. Was that was incredible. Thank you so much. Woo! The million dollar checks in the mail. <laughs> yeah. I'm ballooning. I'm ballooning. Hey, Jerry. Hey. That was incredible. Thank you. It's an amazing way to start the day. It absolutely is. Hey, let me go, my friend. Mayor! Surprise, surprise, surprise! This is your surprise <laughs> breakfast. Hey, where's your glass? Ah, uh, no, I'm driving. Oh, I'm zero, zero. Fair enough, fair enough. The traditional way to celebrate a balloon landing. There's the bottle of bubbly. There's the bottle of bubbly. How lovely. Started back in France pre-revolution. Oh, really? When you landed the balloon, you gave the farmer a glass of champagne, or a bottle of champagne. Ah, uh, for the use of his field. For the use of his field. That's a good tradition. And to stop him from killing you. <laughs> they thought oh. devils were coming from the sky. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, there's so much we have to thank the French for. Yes. But gentlemen, Cheers. enjoy. Cheers. Thank Joe. you for your successful you so flight much. and a safe landing. Thank mm. you. Have you been up in those yes. multiple times? They are brilliant. As often as you can get up there, right? Any time he says he needs ballast. <laughs> <laughs> but this is absolutely spectacular. Now, what are, the, what are the conditions under which the balloons won't go out? The hotter the weather, mm. the less people we put per balloon. Obviously, you've got less lift. Wind is a major critical factor. Oh, I, I would think because it's hot air, you'd get... Oh, right. Cold, dense air, we get more right, lift Right, you get more lift because you're really hot inside the yeah. balloon and it's colder outside, yep. so you get... Right. Oh, boy. Snacks to go with the gentleman. Oh, my... You can't have breakfast purely liquid, even in the middle of Australia. Thank you. Triple chalk, apple and cinnamon. Oh, my God. Sorry, you're a genius. It. Thank you so much. That's incredible. Is this... Is this what this you do This is all for? standard. All standard, yep. huh? The Alice Springs is a service centre. Hmm. Government provides services out of here for an area basically the size of France. We're talking the French references. Wow. Yeah. 28,000 people in Alice Springs, another 20 odd thousand in the surrounding areas. Well, surrounding areas is about 500 kilometre radius. Yeah, 500 k radius. Something like that. Yeah, that's wow. local. It's a big empty country. <laughs> There's no water here, right? No. You won't find water once you're away from a, a water There's source. There's water out there, but you always carry water with you. Life could get a lot worse. Oh, yes, there you are far worse places worse. to wake up in the world. Oh, yeah, just, just take a walk that way for an hour or more. <laughs> You'll know about it. A balloon ride and bubbly. There couldn't have been a better way to start the day in our Outback escapade. The day progressed quickly like this time-lapse shot, and our guide, Karen, came to pick us up for our rendezvous with the magnificent Wedgetail Eagle. So what eagle is this? There's a whole bunch of eagles here. Ah, uh, well, the one that you want to see is the Wedgetail Eagle. The big guy. That's the big guy. That's uh, an eagle with a wingspan of two and a half meters. So it's, you know, Whoa. wider than this bus is. So nice. A big bird, big claws, big wings, big beak, and you get up pretty close and personal. So they hunt in pairs, and two of those eagles can wow. kill and pick up a fully grown kangaroo. So pretty impressive. Do we have an eagle bigger than that um, in India, Rod? Well, it's difficult to say. There's the golden eagle, but it doesn't have a 10-foot wingspan. There's also the imperial eagle, which is very big. South America has one eagle that's like... The harpy. The harpy, eh? That's yeah. the biggest one in the world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's big. Hello, and welcome to the Yellow Spring Desert Park. My name is Doug. I'm a senior guide here at our park. Basically, we're a biological park. We're a display of desert habitats and life within the habitats. So we have a good display of desert botanic life here, desert wildlife, and a good emphasis on local Aboriginal culture here. So Rocky and Mayu have come to visit our park today. So what I'm going to show them is a bit of our wildlife, 
So we're going to go and visit one of our, uh, to see one of our native predators and our largest bird of prey, which is the wedge-tailed eagle. There's lots of the, the little blue bird you were saying oh, is, is mate, there? The fairy wrens, yeah, keep oh, your oh, eyes oh. out. A lot ah, of beautiful birds around there. G'day, G'day Doug. Kieran. How are you going, Not mate? too bad. How are you? How's it going? I'm Mayur. Mayur. Hi, I'm Rocky. Hey, Rocky. How My are you, name's Doug? Doug. Welcome to our park. Excellent. So, uh, the desert park, you know what we are, is a biological park here in Central Australia. And so today what we're going to do for you fellas is uh, take on a bit of a look at our park and, uh, yeah, take you around to see one of our native birds, one yeah. of our birds of prey. That's the big one. We've been waiting for the wedge-tailed eagle. That's the one. And so one of our handlers is here, Angus. So awesome. I'm going to take you around there. And every day at the park here, we do eagle encounters. So what you're going to get today is an exclusive encounter with one of our birds of prey, OK? Completely <laughs> safe, right? Uh, well, yes. But <laughs> okay. Angus will explain more. OK. OK, so okay fellas, okay. come through this way. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, yeah. Karen. See you. Look at that. Now, Rocky, I understand you uh, do a bit of bird watching, so... Yes. Uh, also. 20, 25 years, so, and, and this is the first time I've seen a wedge-tailed eagle. Excellent. Well, this is Angus, one of our handlers, and this is Rory, one of our wedge-tailed eagles here. Oh, hi, Angus. Hey, Angus. Hey, g'day, g'day. No high fives. <laughs> high five. Hi, Rory. <laughs> is he taking any bites out of you yet? Ah, uh, it's not the beak you nearly really need to worry about, it's, it's the feet. Yeah. yeah. Wow, look at that. OK. Yeah, nice. Can I come up and Yeah, so you guys can him? stand next wow. to him. He is beautiful. How, how big is he now? Uh, he's about two kilos. Right. So he's small for the species, but um, the boys are usually a bit smaller with the eagles, which is Ooh. a bit different. So if you guys wanted to face that way, okay. and I can actually put him up on the perch. Great. And you guys will get a nice shot with him. It'll be excellent. So, so how does this work? Do we get to hold him? Or? So, uh, sadly not. Okay. Uh, you have to know him for a few months before it's safe to do that. So we will, might be pushing our luck a bit. So I'm going to pop him up on the, on the perch, guys. Oh, man. Nice. Good. good, Rocky. Stand right there. If he takes your ear out, it'll have been for a good cause. <laughs> am, I, am I in safe distance? You are in safe distance. Okay. But, uh... so who's going to take a picture? Both of us are here. <laughs> Hi, Rory. So he's nice and comfortable. He's having a, a preen while you guys are there, which is yeah. nice to see. He's got to make himself look handsome, you know? There you oh, go. Yeah, yeah. go. Oh, man. Any incredible. do's and don'ts right now, even when... Uh, yeah. Uh, no padding, obviously, but okay. uh, you can see the size of those feet. Nice. Yes. It's, um, yeah, he's happy with you guys as long as you don't... Uh, no sudden movements or pats and you'll be fine. OK. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how old is he now? Uh, he's nine years old this year. Nine um, years old. And is this how big they get or do they get a lot um, bigger? So he's quite small for this species. Mm -hmm. um, he's from near Darwin and the closer to the tropics, often the smaller they get. Right. Uh, the big females can be three times his size. So uh, they can be six kilos. Wow. And the big females are about the fourth largest eagles in the world. And his head's mostly filled up with those eyes, actually. They fill up most of his skull. So oh, really? um, he can see about three times further than us and with about seven times the detail. So it's like Ooh. super HD 4K telly versus... So, so what kind of prey do they... What kind of animals do they prey on over here in Australia? Uh, yeah, it's incredible. They are capable of, of killing uh, wallabies and medium-sized kangaroos. So, oh, my God. Um, those feet that you're so close to, they've got incredible crushing power. Yes. And, uh, yeah, they can fly incredibly quickly. Uh, they have been satellite tracked at at least 145 k's an hour. Oh, that's not and in a dive, that's just flying. In a, well, in a stoop, yeah. In so stoop. they okay. tuck up those wings and, um, yeah, you imagine a small wallaby getting hit by something that weighs about four kilos at that speed and wow. then those talons go to work. So, yes, they are incredible hunters. Um, and they hunt a lot of rabbits and that sort of thing too. But, uh, there, are, there are no vultures in Australia, so wedge tails sort of get all that bonus extra roadkill and stuff like that. Mm. So Apex predator. Yeah, exactly right. They're at the top of the, the food chain, these. Yeah. Well, he's stunning, absolutely. Look at those feathers on his neck. You see the way they move every time he shakes his head? Yeah, those neck I'm feathers. I'm just fascinated by the eyes. Every time he turns and looks at you, it's like, I see you. <laughs> You're not important, otherwise I'd kill you. <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of farmers actually quite like them now because they, they clean up rabbits and, right. and all that sort of thing. So. And the numbers are growing? Yeah, so they've That's been nice. protected for about 30 years now and, mm. uh, yeah, I think it's about a $15,000 fine for shooting one, so that's good protection. And oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, they've come back to those uh, days where they were considered a pest, but thankfully they're, it's, um, they're incredible flyers when they want to. 145 kilometres an hour in a stoop and, uh, 
yeah, they're wonderful to watch uh, on the wing, very graceful. Thanks, Angus. Thanks, Thanks for not biting. Thank Good you, question. Rory. Thanks for not biting. <laughs> it's nice to meet you guys. Yeah. See you, Rory. Next on our list was Australia's largest terrestrial mammal, the renowned red kangaroo. Male red kangaroo, which is the biggest of all our kangaroo types, can stand up to 1.8 two metres tall and weigh up to 80 to 85 kilograms. So they're a very impressive animal, particularly when you see them stand up straight and display their full height and power. They are very impressive. Okay, Rocky, so what we're doing now is uh, heading down to our specific area where we go. Uh, demonstrate and throw our boomerangs. Probably. Nice. So you're familiar with boomerang? Yes. The boomerangs, you can actually like knock down big prey with it. Uh, with so, some boomerangs. Hmm. So there's non-returning boomerangs and returning boomerangs here in Australia. Oh, there's non-returning ones as oh, well? Oh, yes. And in the central part of Australia? <laughs> That's the ones we throw. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a long hunting boomerang. Right. OK. Uh, they were good for bringing down animals such as uh, birds like the Australian Bustard, which is a uh, quite a large oh, yeah, uh, yeah. bird. But the returning boomerangs that everyone knows about, uh, they were much different. And uh, whilst you could bring down some type of uh, uh, birds with it, like mm. you could hurl it through a flock of birds right. and take down one, oh, mind yeah. you, the bird doesn't return with the bird attached. Sure. Okay. <laughs> that would be good. But, That's yeah. an express boomerang delivery. Correct. <laughs> the technology of the returning boomerang mm. is like, uh, well, basically, come through observation of Birds of prey, not the big birds of prey. Oh, so the, the shape. It, it simulates a bird's wing. Right. And that technology, by the way, is not was not known until the early 70s when uh, three returning boomerang were uncovered in southern South Australia mm. in a very uh, swampy area. When they were uncovered, uh, taken out, took them, taken back to Adelaide for analysis at the South Australian Museum. Uh, the, the test uh, determined that those boomerang were up to 10,000 years old. Oof. Wow. So 10,000 years of returning aerodynamic technology. Yep. Just think... there's, there's nothing like it anywhere else. Do we know of any, anything else that you could throw or hunt oh, They have hunting back? sticks, but nothing that comes back. And this works on the technology. One side is, it's like also aeroplane technology. One side is thicker and then it tapers. That's correct. That, sure. that yeah. is correct. 10,000 years before so they figured it out. Are we going to try some? Yes, I've got some, uh, some returning boomerangs. Plus, I want to show you another of uh, a different type of boomerangs. So Kieran's got one of you. Hey, Thanks, Kieran. Kieran. Thanks, oh, mate. Okay, wow. Dangerous there with all that <laughs> stuff. So you can see these ones here are the returning boomerangs. So as you can see how it does simulate like a wing shape there. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, curved on the top, yeah. flat on the bottom. Correct, for lift. That's, that's a, correct. So, that's a great castrol shape, look at that. Okay, okay. so we throw it. Now you, carry, you uh, hold it with the flat end facing out. Flat end, oh, okay, right. That's it, that's the way you're there. Mm -hmm. And the curved side facing in. Okay. Now, if, like I said, if you've made it correctly, as soon as you release, you create aerodynamic lift. Okay. Now, what causes it to return is the rotation, or what they call the gyroscopic precession. These two forces counteract each other, cause it to spiral and come back. So I'm, I'm trying to throw it like this, right? Correct. Okay. So, uh, and also, it's good when you're throwing these, it's good to look where the wind's coming from. So, mm -hmm. like, as we can see today, we look out to the east here. Yeah. We've got a nice easterly breeze coming into our face. Now, usually it's best to stand off, you know, about 45 degrees and angle the boomerang to about a 45 degree like this as okay. well. Okay. Now, the idea then, you don't have to throw hard, mm -hmm. is just release and then give it a quick flick. Whoa! And it, it comes back. So, if, if, it, if you do it real good and you practice a lot mm -hmm. and the wind's not, if the wind doesn't catch it, Mm -hmm. You can circle it to come back right around in front of you. It wow. takes a bit of practice, though. So. Okay, Mayo, I bet you... Come on, after you, sir. I bet you 10 rupees that I'll make my boomerang come closer to us than yours. <laughs> okay, okay, go on, man. Are you going to throw first? Spirit of competition. Are you, you throwing first throw or am I throwing first? Challenger throws first. Okay. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. okay. 
Ready, guys? Yeah. That's nice tea. I reckon mine came closer. No. On a line. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Not airborne. It's to come to you. Who's going to walk less to pick up their boomerang? <laughs> you should have clarified all that earlier. OK, so you owe me five Yours bucks. went out. Let me no, get I don't. Let me get Yours went back. out, mine came in. And this one I don't have to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, people actually threw that as well? Oh, I'm not going to oh, throw it. This one here. Yeah, yeah. Well, this one here is a little bit different. Uh, this was called the hook, or okay. these days they call number seven boomerang for obvious reasons. OK. Yeah. So uh, this is more a combat boomerang. <clears throat> OK. It could be thrown as, as well, but generally these were either a combat boomerang or used in conjunction with a flatter boomerang to use to tap together to create percussion in ceremony. Right. Song oh, so nice. these are more a ceremonial or a combat uh, boomerang, okay. rather than these, which are hunting tools. And actually good, it's also good too if you're hunting emu, which is a very curious bird. Right. Some of the hunters would then put a lot of grass onto their back here, right. and then hold this up like this, and go along like this, and this would be a way of attracting emu in Ooh. closer, oh. and then taking the emu down with the hunting boomerang. That would really look like a, like a bird, wouldn't it? Yeah, look, one of the, the emu, one of our... It's a bird. Uh, it's a bird. <laughs> That's not at that range. It was. It was. It it's was not fair. So authentic. I almost had. You. My boomerang may not have come back like my karma, but we did good today. We're gonna catch up on some sleep as we brace ourselves to another offbeat Aussie experience.